This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this vintage style logo using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll close out of this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set our view to custom. We'll zoom in at 100%, and we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button here. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing we're going to do is create a polygon. So let's come to the Stars and Polygons tool and click on that. And the settings we want to have up here, we want to have polygons selected. We want corners to be 6 and rounded and randomized to both be 0. And once you've done that, just bring the cursor over to the canvas and hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a polygon. Maybe uh, about that size. Not too big, maybe about that size. And we want the corners facing up and down vertically like that. We don't want it sitting flat like this. We want the corners going vertically. And then we can just let go of everything. And then we will um, we'll give that. A, we're going to round the corners of this thing by uh, giving that a stroke. So we're going to hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the blue button to give that a blue stroke. And we're going to come over here to the Stroke Style tab and we're going to bring that up to about 30 and see how that looks. And once you have it set like that, we can go ahead and click on the rounded join and the rounded cap. And maybe that's a little too rounded. Uh, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna drop that down. I'm gonna see what 20 looks like. Okay, see that that looks pretty good right there. You could hold Control on the keyboard and roll up and down on the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And um, oops, I think that looks pretty good right there. So once we get it to that point, uh, what I'm gonna do is come over here to Path. Stroke to path, and path, break apart, and path, union. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and drop that down about in half. Then we go back to our select tool. Let me zoom back out here. Uh, I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and scale this thing up so I can see it a little better. Maybe do about that size. And then we'll come up here. Once we have this selected, we'll come up here and go to path, and we're going to choose linked offset. And then we'll make that red. And then grab this little node up here and just pull it out. Maybe about that much. And then we can convert, we could finalize that by converting that to a path. So we'll go to path, object to path. <clears throat> you see all these little nodes show up. That means it's uh, finalized like that. And we'll go back to our select tool. And we're going to do that one more time. We're going to go to path, link to offset. And then we're going to turn this one blue. And then once again, we'll grab this little node up here and just drag that out about the same width. You want this going out about just as far as that uh, that red one was. Maybe like that. That looks pretty good. And we can go to Path, Object to Path. And we can go to our Select tool. And let's click and drag over this entire thing. And let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. And then we'll click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now I'm going to click on this... Um, this big blue one here in the background. And I'm going to give this a different shade, maybe like a very dark, muddy blue shade, uh, like over here. That looks pretty good, like that. And then we'll click this blue one. <clears throat> and let's give this like a dull tan shade, maybe like that. And then we'll click on this red object. And then we're going to come down here, bring this all the way down to the left, and you're going to see this X mark. We're going to uh, click on that to get rid of the red fill and then we're gonna hold shift and click on the color white to give that a, a stroke like an outline going around the object and we're gonna change the width of that down from 20 to uh, I'll try 1.5 see how that looks uh, maybe a little bigger let's try two alright that's pretty good and once you've done that we can come down here to the dashes drop down and we're gonna click on that and I'm just gonna choose uh, one of these dashed patterns down here Maybe something like that. Hmm, maybe that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll go with that. And once you choose a pattern that you think looks good, a dashed pattern, there's several of them over here. Just pick one that you think looks good. I like this one personally. And then we'll go to Path, Stroke to Path. So that finalizes that. Now the next thing we're going to do is create the ribbon going over this thing and around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to pan the page around. I'm just going to pan it up like that. And I'm going to grab the text tool and click on the canvas. 
And I'm just for this tutorial, I'm going to write vintage logo. And we'll grab the text, uh, the text editor up here. And I'm going to choose League Gothic, that font. Uh, you can choose any font you'd like. I'm just going to choose League Gothic. And we'll close out of that. And we'll go to the Select tool. And I'm going to hold Control and just click and drag one of these arrows to scale this thing up a little bit so I can see it. And then I'll go over to uh, the text tool over here. I'm going to click it down here to create another text object. And I'm going to use all caps again. And I'm just going to write tutorial as the subtext. And I'm going to make that bold. And I'm going to give that a center alignment with that button right there. And then we click back on the, uh, the select tool. And then I'll hold control and click on the first word so we have them both selected. And we'll center that on the vertical axis. And then hold shift and click on the word vintage logo to deselect it. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this up to about here. And then I'm going to hold control and shift to scale this down a little bit. I'll move that up a little more. And then we'll go back to our uh, text tool. Click on that. And over here, I believe, is the second input box in. There should be a uh, spacing between letters. I'm going to click the up arrow on there. And I'm just going to space the letters out a little bit. I think it just makes it look a little nicer. Maybe I'll do something like that. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool. And now let's click and drag over both of those and group them together. We'll go to group selected objects, click on that. And the next thing we want to do is create a rectangle going around this object. So I'm going to go to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle. We're not going to be able to see it. But just uh, click and drag anyway and click on, uh, to create it. I'm going to turn that uh, this I'm gonna turn this red and we're gonna get rid of that stroke there's still that dotted line pattern on there from what we previously did to get rid of that we just hold shift and click on the X and that should get rid of that and we'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to lower this one step with this button right here lower selection one step and I'll hold shift and click on our little group of wording so we have them both selected and center it on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything so what I'll do now is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to turn this white. And then uh, let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to go to the Bezier pen and click on that. And I'm going to start the cursor up towards the, uh, towards the top, maybe like halfway between the top of the wording and the edge of the rectangle, maybe about halfway through and out to the left over here. I'll click and then hold control and bring that line straight across. And then click again and then press enter on the keyboard to create that line right there. And we're going to make this the same thing that this dotted line is. So uh, I believe I made the stroke for that two points. So I'll come over here. I'll make that a two point stroke. I'll give that the same dash pattern that I used before. And I will, uh, what I'm going to do now is convert that to a path. So we'll go to path, uh, stroke to path. And then we'll go back to the select tool. I'm just going to hold control and move this up a little bit. It doesn't seem equally spaced. I'm just, I'm just eyeballing it here. And then I'll right click this and go to duplicate, hold control, click and drag this one down to here. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click the top one so we have them both selected. And let's unify them together by going to path, union. And we could hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red shape. And let's just make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. And then we can click on this red rectangle right here. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on those dotted, that little dotted, dotted pattern we just created and go to path intersection. And then we can turn that white. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over this whole segment we just created. And I'm going to group that together. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this little uh, beige shape in the center. I'm going to center that on the vertical and horizontal axis, just like that. And we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything and click on just this object right here. And then click it a second time so we get our rotation handles. And then hold control on the keyboard and grab this arrow right here on the side and just bring that up one step like that. And uh, what we could do now is we can ungroup that, ungroup selected objects. 
and then click off of it to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this red object and I'm going to duplicate just that red object. So right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make that the same shade of blue that this is. So I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is on the left, or you could just press F7 on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click and drag over this little portion here to make that the same shade. And then I'll go back to the uh, select tool and I'm going to lower this one, two, three steps to put that behind the red uh, behind the red object. And then I'm going to give this a stroke as well. So I'm going to make the stroke the same shade that this blue is. So I'm just going to go back to the dropper by uh, pressing F7. And then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click that segment again to give that a stroke that's the same shade. And then we'll go back to the select tool. And let's make the width of the stroke. Um, let's start out with 12, see how that looks. We want to make the thickness of this stroke the same thickness that this blue object is over here. So uh, let me zoom back out. That's obviously going to have to be a little thicker. So I'm going to go with, um, let's try 20 and see how that looks. Now I'm going to have to go a little thicker than that. 30. Um, okay, I guess that works. And we'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, uh, union. And I'm actually going to click and drag over this whole segment right here. This whole center segment right here. I'm just going to make that a little smaller. It's a little too big. You can just hold control and shift in the keyboard to scale it in. I'm going to scale it in maybe about that much. And then we'll click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the magnifying glass and zoom into this uh, left hand, this top left hand portion right here. And I'm going to grab the bezier pen and turn on the snap to cusp nodes. And I'm gonna snap the cursor onto this corner right here and click, and then that line that gets created, I'm gonna hold control and just bring this line about out about that much. And once it's inside of that dark blue segment right there, I'm gonna click and then let go of control and just bring this thing right back around to the starting point going through the graphic. And I'm going to make that the same shade that this dark grayish blue is by uh, pressing F7 to get back to the dropper. I'm just going to click on that segment right there to make that that shade. I'm going to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then we go back to our select tool and we could lower that to the bottom with this button right here. Lower selected object to the bottom. And we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. So you can see what that did. It created the, uh, the illusion that this part is going around the object. And we're going to do the same thing on this side, only down here. So let's go back to our magnifying glass and zoom back in. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen once again. I'm going to snap this onto the corner. Hold control and bring this line diagonally down. Once it's into the blue segment, click and then let go of control. And just bring this line all the way through the graphic, back to the starting point. Uh, we'll go back to F7 for our dropper. We'll make that the same shade. And then we'll get rid of the stroke by holding Shift and clicking the X. And we go back to our Select tool and lower that to the bottom. Then we could press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And what we'll do next is, uh, I'm just for a little bit of a decoration, I'm just going to put a couple of stars right there. So we'll go to the Stars and Polygons tool. And this time we're going to click on a star instead of polygon. We're going to want this to be five corners. And we're going to want the spoke ratio to be 0 0.375 and then rounded and randomized both zero. And then we can come over to the canvas, hold control and click and drag to create a star. And we'll go back to the select tool and uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit. It's not situated. Um, it's not sitting up right. It's kind of like tilted. You can see by the bottom two uh, legs of the star here. So I'm going to go back to the select tool. I'm going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles. I'm just going to rotate this around a little bit so it's upright. And that should do the trick. We could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And I'm going to make this the same shade of red that this is. So I'll press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper and then click on that to make it that shade. Go back to the select tool. And then I'll put this over here. Oh, you know what? Let's turn off our snap to cusp nodes. We don't need that anymore. And I'll hold control and shift and click and drag this down. So it's about that much smaller. Then I'll hold shift in the keyboard. Actually, I'm going to make that a little smaller. 
uh, that's pretty good. Now we'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the beige uh, square there. And we're going to center that on the vertical axis. And then hold shift and click on that beige shape again to deselect it. Then we could right click on this star and go to duplicate. And then we could flip that vertically with this button here, flip selected objects vertically and hold control and click and drag this down to the bottom, maybe about right there. Then I'll hold shift and click on the top star so we have them both selected and group them together. And just to make sure that there's equal distance between each edge of the star and the edge of the graphic, I'm just gonna hold shift in the keyboard and click on that beige object and center that on the horizontal axis and that'll make sure it's evenly aligned in there. So uh, one last final step is, uh, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna click and drag over this whole thing. I'm gonna hold Control and Shift just to scale this down a little bit. And I'm gonna put this over here. And then I'll right click this and go to Duplicate. And then hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag over to the right, this duplicated copy. And then click off of it to deselect everything. <laughs> And once we've done that, let's click on the group of words and press delete and get rid of those. And then let's click on the stars and press delete and get rid of those. And then we'll click and drag over this entire thing and go to path, union, unify it together into one shape. And then we'll click and drag over this uh, portion on the left over here and we'll group that together. And one last final step is to give this thing a bit of a grunge texture. And I'm going to put a link to an image that I'm going to use to do this in the description of this video. So go ahead and download that image and save it in a place where you could easily access it. And once you've done that, we could just come up to File, Import, and find out wherever you have that. It should be Scratch Texture, uh, no, Scratch.png. And we're going to embed it instead of linking it. If you want to know the difference between the two, there's a little description there. And then click OK so it, it brings this image in. Now this thing is gonna start out of being a little too big, so I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit. And I'm actually gonna move this off to the uh, right for now. I'm gonna take this group of objects right here, and I'm gonna bring that up one step, raise selected object one step, so it's going above this uh, object, and then hold Shift and click on that object right there, and let's center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then let's take our little scratched uh, texture and place it over the, the, uh, the logo. And we'll bring the opacity down a little bit so we can see behind it and see exactly where the patterns on the texture line up with the graphic. Um, wherever there's a dark, wherever there's black on this texture right here, wherever this bl there's black, it's going to make uh, the object beneath it transparent. And wherever there's white, it's going to be fully transparent. So you want to make sure there's none of these black splotchy marks going over um, important parts of the logo, like the wording. So in order to do that, I'm just going to bring the opacity down. And I'm going to make sure there's nothing too... Uh, like, you wouldn't want to put this part right over the, uh, the wording because you wouldn't even be able to read the logo. So that would not be good. I'm just going to use maybe this portion right here. Uh, maybe that. I'm going to make this a little bigger actually. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this up and put this maybe maybe like that. I guess that'll have to do for now. And once we've done that, we could hold Shift and Alt and click on this uh, texture graphic again, but right above where the logo is so it grabs the logo beneath it as well. We'll bring the opacity all the way up and with the both of those selected, we'll go to Object, Mask, and Set. And there you have our vintage logo design. And the reason why I put that darker copy beneath this copy, because if you move this, you can see everything behind here after applying that texture is transparent. So you want to make sure you have some kind of color back there. I'll show you even again. Uh, if I change that from that blue shade to, uh, let's say, green, you'll see green comes through behind there. But um, you can try black as well. And no, I don't think that looks as well. I think the best way is to use that dark blue shade. So that's how you could do that using Inkscape. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.